Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So here's the deal with Kelly Knox. She's an author and freelance entertainment writer in the Seattle area. She contributes to the official websites for pop culture powerhouses including Star Wars, Star Trek, DC Comics, Marvel Comics, and Crunchyroll. She also writes for entertainment reporting sites like IGN. She specializes in news and features as well as creating original craft projects for all ages. Her books include Marvel Monsters, Creatures of the Marvel Universe Explored and Star Wars Be More Obi-Wan and Marvel Studios Be More Spider-Man from DK Publishing. She's also a co-author of Star Wars Every Day and her project Star Wars Conversation Cards from Inside Editions is coming out on August 1st. I got to talk with her about the project a couple of weeks ago and so that'll be the first part of our conversation along with her knack for writing funny dad jokes, Star Wars related dad jokes or adapting existing jokes into Star Wars related dad jokes. So without further ado, here's the first part of my conversation with Kelly Knox, the author and creator of Star Wars Conversation Cards. Kelly Knox, thank you so much for joining me on Star Wars 7x7. How are you today? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's wonderful to talk with you. I'm so excited. And congratulations on the upcoming release of Star Wars Conversation Cards. I think that's coming out August 1st, if I'm not terribly mistaken. Is that nope, right? That's right. Yep, that's right. Excellent. So how did this whole project come about for you? Uh, so it's not something I ever expected to write, and I'm really <laughs> happy that I got the chance. The uh, The publisher got in touch with me with the opportunity, and uh, I said yes, because it sounded like it was a lot of fun and something different than I've ever done before. And, uh, you know, I didn't think at first it was something I'd be great at because I'm naturally shy. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But uh, the more, you know, the more I started writing questions, I think the more kind of into the groove I got. So it was a really fun project. So as you were getting into that groove and you're starting to write the questions, um, you know, were you testing them on groups of friends to see which ones worked <laughs> well and which ones didn't? Like, what was your creative process like that? Uh, so... Some projects, like well, most projects for Star Wars, you know, they're kind of secretive, so I couldn't really reach out to a whole bunch of friends. But I did, mm -hmm. you know, my immediate family, I can always, you know, bounce ideas off of and talk to them. And so uh, my husband and my daughter, she's 14, I would sometimes uh, pose questions to them. And I have a, a twin sister, and she often gets a lot of my... Uh, she gets joke jokes run by her sometimes, and she gets <laughs> these kinds of questions because I wanted to make sure... Um, you know, I'm the biggest Star Wars fan among on my whole family. So I wanted to make sure that the questions were approachable, no matter your level. And so I use them a lot for that kind of like, hey, have you heard of this place? Or if I said this name, do you know who that is? And so that's more more than what their answers were. That's what I was looking for in their feedback. Although, of course, one day I hope I get to hear all their answers. But <laughs> <laughs> does that mean that you're going to try it out officially on them, hopefully, when it's, you know, when you can actually do so officially? Hopefully, hopefully, at least one or two. It'd be, I don't know how they would answer most of these questions. So it would definitely be a fun camping trip or dinner or something that I could, I could pull these out for. And you are, since you just mentioned it, I, I feel like I have to bring it up, but you are a, an incredibly prolific jokester on social media <laughs> as well. Is that just a you know, particular side passion of yours? Uh, yeah, that actually started in, uh, in lockdown in 2020, where mm. everything was just so awful online. It was all just bad news all the time. And one random day, I decided to start telling terrible jokes and then it turned into every single day and I think I kept that up for like a year and a half and then you know it's kind of slowed down a lot but um I still once in a while will send my sister a text with like is this funny or do you have any idea what I'm talking about and she's always really honest which is a, a nice <laughs> a nice uh sounding board to have so sometimes she'll say eh, miss that missed the mark and so I'll just uh, I'll try again <laughs> <laughs> and... yeah it's just for fun <laughs> And they are delightful, by the way. Oh, so thank you. They're horrible. Thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they're <laughs> they're del I wouldn't call them horrible. I mean, I know where you're going with that. Basically, you know, they are designed to be groaners in some fashion, but I think that's become a little bit more popular in its way over the last few years. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe the uh, the cheesier the the better lately. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. 
Um, bringing you back though to the conversation cards, though, um, you also wrote a mini book for the set, and you know I think that actually if, like they could sell that as a little standalone book thing too. So uh, <laughs> it's really cool. Was that? part of the the project parameters from the start or you know an idea that developed as you were creating it uh it was part of the uh from the start it was part of the outline from the start the the goal at least for me was um like i, I think i already said i kind of wanted to keep it approachable for all levels of star wars fandom so i kept the whole mind i kept my dad in mind because hmm. he saw you know he saw the original trilogy in the 70s and 80s and he's maybe seen it once or twice since then on hbo or tnt or something and so mm -hmm. i wanted to make it something that he could read and, and get a general idea of what um to talk about and so the the book i felt like was a good way the mini booklet was a good way uh to kind of either prompt some ideas give somebody an answer just so that they don't feel left out of the conversation because that's you know that's the worst feeling i don't want that to happen anytime and so you know it either it's a little cheat sheet or it's just a, oh yeah i forgot about that guy kind of a thing and i i think it does really well with that um that was a part of uh things that i wanted to make sure that i got in there were certain like I wanted to get a hello there and there for Obi-Wan <laughs> and things like that. So it was great to have that opportunity to, to expand some of these questions out and uh, to get some more explanations and hints in there for whoever might use the cards. Yeah, it is really accessible. And I do like that idea a lot about having it be you know, more welcoming and more inclusive in that fashion. So it definitely makes it something that I guess could be accessible, even for the person who's not necessarily a, you know, a, a deeply entrenched Star Wars fan, for right. lack of a better way of putting it. But I think, yeah, I think it kind of makes it accessible in a way where they would be able to feel like they could answer the questions, even if they didn't have that grounding that a lot of fans do. Right. Yeah. There's one question in there that's like, uh, you know, you're protecting a town, you get to make a team of six Jedi. And I could just picture, you know, a kid or my dad or whoever saying, I don't know, I, I can't name six Jedi. How am I supposed to pick these characters? And so that's, that's kind of where I was going with, you know, hints and explanations and things like that. So that uh, they, they could find those names or at least feel like they could contribute. Mm -hmm. So because you have written these, and there are 125 of them in this set, I thought it would be a good idea to actually have a conversation around a couple of them. <laughs> okay. Because, I mean, that's what they're designed for. So yes. I picked three of them out, and I just picked Star Wars numbers to go with that, to be able to choose them somewhat at random. So the first one I chose was number 30 which is you can choose to adopt one Star Wars creature to be your pet. Which do you pick and what would you name it? <laughs> so the, the fun thing is no matter, well, I feel like it, it depends on what recent media you've consumed with Star Wars. Cause I noticed that when I was writing the questions like where my brain would kind of go. So right now my answer I think would be a boggling cause I just mm. played uh, Jedi survivor. Um, but, and then I, I was about to say, I think the other hardest part was, um, I don't have, I didn't have to think of just one answer, right? I had to think of examples yeah. <laughs> for the booklet. And so, uh, these, these get a little harder for me to answer sometimes, but since I did just, a, a play survivor, I think I would go with the boggling and then for a name, that's, that's a lot harder. Something I don't think about as much when I name my D and D characters, I usually do like a one syllable, easy to remember name. So I would probably do something like, you know, not Ben, but you know, something <laughs> like that. That's kind of easy to remember. <laughs> right. It might have a couple of lesser used continents like the D's and the K's and the B's and the G's. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I tend to keep names simple. So uh, I don't know what I would name a boggling. I don't know. I'm trying to think of I even my character names that I've used. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I haven't played Survivor yet, so I don't necessarily know if any of the Bogglings are actually named in Survivor yeah. or if they're just running around. I think they're just running around. He calls them Buddy, so maybe I could just call one Bud. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about I, you? I think for myself, um, it would be a Lothcat. Um, mm. 
I actually I have one. My my sons got me one from a, a Build a Bear shop when they were doing a promotion with the Mandalorian. So I have a fun loft cat in my office slash studio here. And depending on whether it was male or female, I would probably name it either Sabine or Ezra. I think. Aww, I like that. Thank I you. think I did put I did put loft cats first in the uh, in the possible <laughs> list mm. of pets because I feel like a lot of us would pick that as well. Yeah, it's definitely more accessible than trying to have a wampa as a pet, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah nobody's going to do that unless they're like some big game hunter with, you know, hundreds of acres in Montana or something like yeah. that. Yeah, although I bet some people will say they want a rancor, like Boba Fett or that sad rancor keeper guy in Return of the Dead Eye. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was just, I think I just saw Consetta Parker on TikTok and she was showing a bit of her uh, collection and she has a an unusual affinity for rankers. And so she has a lot of different ones of them that she showed on her video. It was really cool. Yeah, there's so many to pick from. It's great. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to pause the conversation there and we'll pick up with the rest of it tomorrow where we will actually try out some of the conversation cards. But for now, that's going to do it for today's episode of the podcast. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.